Hey everyone, this video is a kickoff for my next project. If you've watched my previous video, you already know the sequential gearbox was a test bed to see what could be done with 3D printing and ultimately better understand the engineering behind a racing gearbox. So now with a successful build of a 3D printed gearbox under my belt, I've decided to jump into the deep end and try something several orders of magnitude more complex. Uh, my goal with this project is to design and build a working full size model of a Formula One style gearbox. For those of you who don't know, Formula One is arguably the absolute pinnacle of automotive racing. Formula One has the fastest cars and massive budgets. So it stands to reason that the design and engineering of a Formula One gearbox pushes the boundaries of what is possible. These gearboxes are absolutely fascinating. As I delved more into their design, I couldn't help but feel in awe of the sheer amount of time and engineering that went into literally every facet of every single part. Every time I look at a picture of one of these gearboxes, I see something new. And that to me is what makes these so special. So what are the specs of a Formula One gearbox like this? Well, this design is loosely based on a 2009 through 2013 Formula One gearbox, which has seven forward speeds in addition to a mandatory reverse gear. Per the regulations, the forward gears are only a spindly 12 millimeters wide and have to be made from steel. No exotic materials are allowed. The center to center of the shafts has to be less than 85 millimeters or a little less than three and a half inches. And the gear stack with its seven main gears plus reverse is only around 180 millimeters long or seven inches. But despite its diminutive size, this gearbox has to transmit over 800 horsepower, 18,000 RPM, which is just mind blowing. Oh, and these gearboxes shift incredibly fast. They have two shift barrels, one for the odd and one for the even gears. That allows for totally seamless shifting. In fact, for the briefest of moments, two gears are actually engaged at once. An entire gear change can take as little as five to eight milliseconds, roughly a hundred times faster than a human can shift a manual gearbox. This design is inspired by gearboxes used in Formula One. This is not an exact copy of any one manufacturer or team's gearbox. A lot of the parts needed changes to be able to be 3D printed. I wasn't able to get an accurate scale on every part. Um, Costa was also a factor. For example, the main shaft and the lay shaft could be a bit bigger in diameter, but then I'd need, you know, 18 $33 bearings versus $18.50 bearings. Um, additionally, most of the teams buy the core components from the same manufacturer, but then extensively customize them to fit their needs and budget. So every one of them is unique. And I couldn't find enough pictures of any one team's particular gearbox configuration. So my design became a best of montage. Okay, the first thing that needs to get assembled is going to be the main shaft. But before I do that, I just wanted to show you one of the really cool innovations that an F1 transmission has over other transmissions. Um, so this is a slider from my sequential transmission that I built last time. And this is actually a considerably smaller uh, transmission. But as you can see, the slider from the F1 transmission is actually thinner. And the reason for this is an innovation called internal dogs which essentially the holes that the dogs go into actually go all the way through the slider. And the dog actually only goes halfway, but it eliminates this space that's required for the shift fork um, to be between the two dogs. And this alone takes five to seven millimeters out that's needed between the gears so that the gears can get even closer together. And then the dogs themselves are actually sunk a little bit into the gear itself. So essentially the gears overlap and can get even closer together. Here's the assembled main shaft. Um, as you can see, all the gears are actually rollerized against the shaft minus the reverse gear, which is actually splined to the shaft. Um, this is just a sensor ring here on the end. I'm not really sure particularly what it's for. I just saw it on the F1 transmission, so I just copied it. Um, this is my own sensor ring that will be for a photo interrupter so that I can actually see the speed that the uh, shaft is rotating. Um, I've only got one slider on here because uh, the other ones are still being printed. Um, but as you can see, it actually slides back and forth. And when it slides, it actually locks the gear to the shaft itself. Here's the lay shaft. It's much more straightforward than the main shaft. Um, essentially, it's just a spline shaft that will take each one of these gears, which is splined to the shaft itself. And then there's a series of spacers um, between the gears that actually space them out correctly to line up with the gears on the main shaft. So I'll just go ahead and assemble all that. Here we have our uh, completed shafts. Um, I've just gone ahead and actually done some measurement on them to confirm that they're both the same length. And I had to do a little bit of sanding on the lay shaft spacers to kind of bring it in. Um, 
this transmission has very tight tolerances. So the two shafts have to be within about a millimeter of each other in length. And that's also important because this uses roller bearings and roller bearings cannot take axial loads. And so the way this is designed is it will actually have a little bit of end play um, set up in the overall uh, transmission so that we're not loading these roller bearings up and causing them to overheat. Next step is to go ahead and throw these inside the uh, frame. Okay, the frame's pretty uh, straightforward. Um, this is the actual input plate, so the clutch and the clutch cover will be mounted to this, and the uh, drive's gonna go through that bearing through the lay shaft. And this, this mount is actually something that I believe the F1 teams use just for maintenance and for building up the actual transmission. Um, from what I can tell, this these holes are actually integrated into the transmission's case itself. And so this part's not actually necessary, but I'm using it for the model so that we can have it, the transmission stand up and be able to uh, actually spin. And then the actual part that holds each end of the transmission together is just some eight millimeter threaded rod. Um, right now, I've just got two nuts on each end so that I can actually come up with the ideal uh, spacing between the two uh, input and the output ends so that uh, I can set the uh, free play on the actual shafts. But once that's set, I'm actually got an aluminum tube, a 13 millimeter aluminum tube that I will slide over this and actually cut to length so that I don't need those two nuts and it'll make it look a little bit nicer in the final product. What I've gone and done is actually installed the uh, eight millimeter uh, threaded rod into the input plate. Um, I went ahead and measured 197 millimeters between the plate and the top of this nut. Um, that's about a millimeter extra uh, beyond what I need. I'll have to go ahead and fine tune the last little bit. Um, as you can notice, I've got the bearings in here as well. And I used the plug on the front of the input plate actually as the stop for this particular bearing up here. And then this one, um, again, this is a prototype part. So the final part will actually have four. I initially designed it with six and it didn't work out with the uh, reverse gear. So go ahead and put in the uh, lay shaft here, like so. And then we'll put in the main shaft, which goes right here. And as you can see, they line up perfectly, just like I planned it. Okay, the last step here is to actually assemble the uh, output side of the transmission. So we just have to put the uh, bearings for the output side on. Um, so this bearings for the main shaft goes right there. And this bearing here is for the lay shaft. And then this just slides over the top and voila, there it is assembled. So I'm just gonna throw some nuts on here. Okay, well now that I know the big parts actually are working fine with each other, I can go ahead and wrap this video up. I still have several things that I need to sort out. Uh, one of them being the reverse gear, which uh, my design for reverse just didn't work out. So there's gonna be a clean slate there. I also found that the uh, detents were too big and too steep on my shift drums. So I'm gonna go ahead and make a detent test rig. I probably won't be capturing any video of that unless my uh, audience is hardcore into detents. And then finally, I've got to decide on the electronics and motor that are going to uh, drive this whole thing. It kind of depends on what's available during this uh, coronavirus era. And then lastly, uh, I have a few more parts that need to be designed and a lot more parts that need to be printed out. So hopefully, by next time I can also be able to manually shift the transmission so that it can confirm that all the gears and all the clearances are gonna work out. So thanks for watching. And if you wanna see more videos like this, uh, please consider subscribing. Thanks.